The Swiss Jura. This highland area in the northwest of Switzerland is held to be the little brother to the Alps. One thing can still be found in abundance here, unspoiled nature. The Jura Mountains run along the Swiss-French border. In the south lies the Vallée de Joux. On the high pastures of the Jura Mountains, hikers will often see dry stone walls. A legacy of the Romans, who brought the art of dry stone masonry to Central Europe, stone placed on stone with no mortar. For centuries, the walls were used to demarcate land between neighbors or fence pastures. Many walls were replaced by wire and wood, becoming forgotten relics, in time blending in with their surroundings. Others are now regularly maintained. Whatever condition they're in, today we know how important they are for plants and animals. Valuable biotopes form inside and around dry stone walls. Whether reptiles like this wall lizard or small mammals like this mouse, they all appreciate a safe, dry hideaway. Away from the wall, life is much more dangerous. A fox is on the prowl for food, and a mouse like this would be perfect. He searches the high grass with all senses honed to catch the slightest movement. Not even the faintest rustle escapes him. He can jump up to six feet into the air to perform his so-called mouse leap. And is sometimes rewarded with a plump water vole. Will he eat it straight away, or take it home to his young, or even store it for later? That's his secret. The showpiece of the Vallée de Joux is the eponymous lake, the Lac de Joux. At nine kilometers long, it's the largest lake in the entire Jura Massif. Not everyone is awake this early in the morning. The lake is a favorite breeding ground for the great crested grebe. But other waterfowl also appreciate the fish and nutrient-rich waters. The swampy tributary of the Lac de Joux is home to many dragonflies. Two become one, the famous dragonfly mating wheel. Male and female dragonflies can be joined in this reproductive position for up to six hours. This damselfly is still on the lookout for a partner. Blue damselflies are rare as their hatchery requirements are very specific. The water can't be too warm so high-altitude lakes are ideal. If they feel threatened, the male will spread its wings and lift its abdomen to frighten off other dragonflies. But generally speaking, dragonflies are peaceful creatures.
The Lac de Joux is fed by the Orbe River that rises in the French part of the Jura Mountains. Here, the river Orbe takes its natural course, loops, bends, and curves. The so-called meanders are due to the slight gradient of the valley. Moorland lines the banks, making them difficult to access. The Vallée de Joux was inaccessible for a long time, so was only settled very late. Hardly surprising, as to the west, it's completely sealed off by the Grand Rizou, the largest forested area in Switzerland. 200 years ago, wolves and bears roamed the area. Today, the forest still seems almost impenetrable. It's also literally the green border between France and Switzerland. On clear days, Mont Blanc is visible, the highest mountain in the Alps. But size alone isn't everything. Small things can be quite impressive too, even really small things. The Vallée de Joux is home to one of the largest colonies of red ants in Europe, numbering around 20 million insects. Every one of them seems to know exactly what to do. But who controls the big picture? The intelligence and sensory skills of an individual ant are, to put it kindly, rather limited. The secret of this perfectly functioning collective lies in communication, because there is no one single determinant. Ants communicate via pheromones, odoriferous substances that they receive and pass on with their feelers. This is how they identify members of the same colony. The best feeding spots, possible sources of danger, ants also obtain this information through the scent of others. And like a snowball system, the scent-borne knowledge spreads in no time. This all serves a single purpose, survival of the species. The colony's center is the nest where the queen ant lays her eggs. Fur and spruce needles, twigs and resin, it's all construction material for this ant heap. The super colony of the Swiss Jura consists of around 1,200 nests like this, an entire empire, and a true wonder of nature in miniature. The Jura has other big features too. One of Switzerland's most impressive natural landmarks is located here. The Creux du Vent. The rocky arena is a geological feature resulting from erosion of the Jura Mountains after the last ice age. At its base, in the wooded caldera, there are still remnants of glacial moraines. The rock walls plunge 160 meters to the valley floor below. It's called the Swiss Grand Canyon, an imposing monument to time.
The caldera is one of the country's oldest nature conservation areas. Up above, cattle spend their summers on the plateau's alpine pastures. The Creux du Vent's rock faces rise steeply from the dense forests. They reach right up to the high plateau. And here, with a little luck, one might encounter an extremely shy wild inhabitant. the lynx. Its shyness is not unfounded. The relationship between man and lynx is complicated. At the beginning of the last century, this predator was extinct in Switzerland. In the 1970s, a few pairs were reintroduced, among other places, in Creux du Vent. Meanwhile, the numbers of lynx in Switzerland have risen and there is once again heated debate over whether to cull them to protect indigenous wildlife. But this feral inhabitant of the Swiss Jura still retains its protected status and luckily has many on its side. The Creux du Vent is situated in the middle of the Val de Travers, also called the Valley of the Green Fairy. It's famed as the home of absinthe, the highly alcoholic drink that was long prohibited as it impaired the senses. As autumn gradually approaches, the leaves begin to change color. Before falling to the ground, the foliage puts on a final blaze of colors. Many forest dwellers start to prepare for their imminent winter hibernation. To survive it, the hedgehog must gorge on as much as possible. Nuts, snails or beetles, every calorie counts. The fire salamander is searching for suitable winter quarters where it can spend the next few months. A root cavity seems ideal. It will be able to protect itself there from the imminent cold. And it won't have long to wait. Quite soon, the trees will lose their leaves. The first frost sometimes arrives earlier than expected, especially in the higher altitudes of the Swiss Jura. And eventually, the time has come. Winter arrives. One region in Switzerland is especially closely linked with this season. It's actually quite famous for being cold. La Brévine, a high valley in the canton of Neuchâtel. Because of the valley's isolated location, so-called cold air lakes often form the cooled air is heavy and stays near the ground. It cannot escape from the hollow of the high valley. The locals say that there are only two seasons here, winter and the next winter. Minus 40 degrees centigrade has been measured here, temperatures more likely to occur in Siberia. It's not that extreme every year but life here is still a challenge, for man and beast alike. Mm. 
some creatures fortunately clear the way for others. It's unusual to see a badger now. They're normally hibernating. So why did this one venture forth? Perhaps it was woken by hunger. Sleeping through the cold months, the survival strategy of many animals. Hollow tree trunks or nesting boxes are good winter quarters for the dormouse. It hibernates from September through to June, sometimes more and sometimes less soundly. During hibernation, it loses up to 50% of its body mass. Saving energy is essential. So, best carry on sleeping. In La Brevine, winter generally lasts longer than in other parts of the Jura region. Near the village lies the Lac des Taillères, a typical karst lake. It has no inflow or outflow, maintaining its levels with rain and meltwater. In early March, the snow begins to melt here too. The lake's water seeps away, continuing to flow underground, and then, as if from nowhere, reappears six kilometers away. Here, it emerges from a rock, becoming the source for the Arreuse. From here, the river then makes its way through the Jura. A landscape of wild beauty. Mm -hmm. 